Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I am going to finish off the main part of this picture here from Rooms of Wonder by Johanna Basford. So I'm going to go ahead and do the bathroom in the center and I'm going to do those little two bottles down the bottom. So, and I've got to actually give you a little tiny sneak peek on the background. So for those that follow my Instagram, you might have seen that I had a um, little vote for the background here a few days ago. And you guys wanted a bokeh background with polychromos pencils. So I'm going to do that, but I'm not doing that today. I'm going to do that next time. So uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Now today I'm going to just start ahead, start here with these little fairy lights that hangs over the bathtub. I just want to map out that little light area there before I start anything else. And um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with the wall colour yet. But I thought at least that way I have the light source down first. And I'm not going to accidentally sort of colour them over and then uh, sort of be be stuck with no sort of light source and no reflection on the back of the wall so that's what I'm doing first now for that little radio off the top I did end up going and finding a photo on Google of this little vintage looking radio so I think if you just type in vintage radio that's actually one of the few that first that comes up and that's what I'm gonna do with that I might just insert the little photo I used I think so I'm just going to do it similar to this, not identical, but I'm going to have it pink with sort of little gold tones on it. So to start with, I'm just going to go ahead and use my ivory all over this um, radio. That will just help me sort of tone down the color, the pink color, just because we don't have any sort of pastel-y pinks in this uh, polychroma set. So you just blend it together until you get the color that you want. So I'll just now put that ivory down and that just covers some of the tooth so that will help me lighten up that color that pink color a little bit so you can see now as I'm putting it down it doesn't turn out like super dark so obviously this isn't a crazy dark color to start with but it's definitely usually a lot darker than what I'm doing now so it just helps me get that sort of pastel -y kind of color. And I'm going to go ahead and use some darker shades just sort of along, around the edges. I'm not going overly complicated with this. I just wanted that sort of kind of little bit vintagey look. So we're just going to do this pink color and then we're going to do some gold accents.
I wanted to bring in just a little bit of blue from those flowers up the top. I'm not going to go in crazy with the layering, but I just thought I'll just do a blue and white striped flower pot here down the bottom. great way to help out this channel if you'd like is to give this video a thumbs up and if you want to I'd love to read you guys' comments they always cheer me up and it's great if you have questions I'll try to answer them as well and if you are new to this channel I would love to have you subscribe and if you click the notification bell you'll get notified whenever I post new content
Now, as you may notice, I'm kind of coloring these similarly to those big leaves up the top, but because they're such a small scale, I'm only gonna use a couple of colors and I'm just sort of, I'm not doing as much layering and things. I just want to get the a similar effect just with a little bit less time because there's so many things in this little picture here. So I want to use my time where it matters the most. Alright, it is time to start our main feature, which is the bathtub. And I've decided to go with a gold bathtub with little black accents on it. So I'm just going to start out with this light yellow ochre, and then I'm going to use, I'm thinking, some maybe like the burnt sienna or some walnut brown I think and then we'll see where we end up but that's my main colors to start with anyway
camera cut out very shortly after I started with this pencil. I've literally just added mainly around the edges and anywhere that overlaps and I think as a shadow. So you'll see now that's a bit more underneath the towels and just underneath that top edge of the bathtub. One of the most important things when you do color gold is to have that contrast between the light and the dark areas. You really want to leave a bit of white paper on it and you want some sort of darker contrasting areas. I do tend to go in with a tiny bit of black sort of here and there and then that way we have this white area and we have that dark area and it makes it look really nice and shiny. decided to go with a black and white checkered floor for this I think it's gonna look cool with those that gold and black bathtub so I'm just making sure that when I'm doing the black tiles I'm kind of leaving a little bit of a highlighted area in the center and I'm also going to be using some I'm thinking the Caput Mortem Violet in there just to bring in that little bit of that, those slight red tones 
in there but I don't want it too bright if that makes sense so that one is really nice to do that with and then I'll probably use my Derwent drawing Chinese white to blend this with Now while this is clearly a bubble bath, the bubbles are obviously within each other and not like individual bubbles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of the colours that often shine through when you see bubbles. So I'm going to do a little bit of blue tones and I'm thinking maybe using some salmon as well. And I'm sort of just going to blend them together a little bit. So I'm thinking blue down the bottom and then use salmon a little bit more closer to the top. I might also add in maybe like a dark yellowy colour sort of for where some of the light hits it at the top.
So I'm going to tie in these towels with the colour of the outside of the big pot. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of Pompeian red. It's not identical to the outer one. I want it slightly different but the same kind of tones. So I'm just going to follow wherever I think the sort of shades are. So where it folds over here I'm going to have it a little bit darker and then go a bit lighter towards the left I'm thinking on this one and I think the other towel I'm going to do even lighter and maybe use like a base layer of the beige red
This is a pretty standard basket weave basket, so I'm just going to go over it, the whole thing with Bista and then I'm going to use some burnt sienna and then walnut brown for most of the shading. So I'm going to try to go darker where those little, well, where it goes under those little uh, vertical lines and then I'm going to sort of have it highlighted on so it's right in between those lines on the horizontal lines. So oh, I can't talk today. But yes, that's my plan. If I need to go a little bit darker, it will probably be just sort of on the right hand side. Just sort of a little bit away, sort of what sort of makes it curve a little bit. But we'll see how we do it.
Since we got those jars with candles on the top, I'm just going to add a little bit of this um, ochre colour up the top, just to sort of yellow it up a little bit. And then I reckon we're going to get started with the candles. decided to make the walls white however white is never really white when it comes to having a lot of colors around so I'm gonna go in with a light gray first and then just cover all of the walls apart from obviously where the lights are and then I'm reckoning I think I'll add in some darker gray sort of to mark out my shadows and then I'll add a little bit of I think beige red just to sort of warm it up that little bit. So we'll see how we make this look in the end.
you can see sort of up the top here around the radio and then up along the lines of those big leaves Johanna has sort of added in a little bit of shadow so that's a good place to start adding in some darker grey tones. with my beige red it has a tendency not to show up all that well on the camera but it's definitely there I am still going in very light though so you just want to kind of tickle the paper until you get like a tiniest little bit of a tinge and it just takes away some of that tooth on the paper and just gives a little bit more play of color on that white wall So for these little bottles on the right hand side I'm going to use a little bit of salmon I think. Now you can do, go ahead and use these same colours on those two little bottle, bottles down the bottom of the page as well. You don't have to sort of <laughs> wait around for me to do, do those because I will probably do them off camera. So just use the same, same colours that we're using up here and that way it'll just make it easy. At this point I'd gone and had lunch and then I forgot that I was doing the little bottles and I just started doing more shadows so don't worry I will get back to those bottles very shortly.
So because we have these little black and white accents on the floor, I'm just going to go ahead and do black outlines on the window here. And I'm also thinking sort of down towards the bottom of the window where the lights are, I'll probably use, I'm thinking either the red violet or the caput mortem violet, just to sort of lighten it up while still having it dark. And that way it looks like it's sort of, the light is shining on it.
gonna bring in the cinnamon just up the top there just to darken it up a little bit the um, beige red is probably a little bit too light up here and wouldn't really show up so I'm just gonna use the cinnamon they work really well together and it'll at least show up over the top of that gray Inside of this pot and by inside I mean just here where it's sort of been cut away I'm gonna go in first and sort of add in these sort of ochre terracotta -y kind of colors and then I'm gonna go over with some gray tones I kind of want it slightly terracotta ish but not completely and utterly orange so that's why I'm gonna go over with the gray tones over and then just tone it all down I forgot I'd zoomed in quite a fair bit here so I'm just doing exactly the same on that little bottom line for me to give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek on what we're going to do f for our background so I'm gonna go in lightly with our May green and we're gonna do this kind of bokeh background which is this sort of background you often see like on photos like portraits and things or when something is in focus and you have this sort of blurred light sources on in the background 
so I'm just starting by layering down the May green all over and then we're going to start making circles and working ourselves from light to dark. going over with a second layer of the same pencil I'm just starting now to kind of create a bit of a circle so I'm leaving a little bit of the area just with the one layer of the pencil and then I'm kind of coloring around this circle so I'm only as you can see I'm only putting on a very very light 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 line there for the circle and then coloring around that and that will leave that one layer sort of in the center of that circle and then we're making it darker around and then we're going to go over with a slightly darker pencil and then you have that may green second layer as our circles and so on and so on as we work our way up. get the best effect by having some larger and some smaller circles and some sort of middle size ones as well so I'm just going to do a couple of smaller ones here and then you get to see what I mean
So I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of cream to that first layer of circles that I did just to yellow it up that little bit because I probably add some more yellow tones when I do the actual background. And then I'm going to go ahead and start adding some uh, Sakura Jelly Roll. I used the 05 because it's got a really, really fine nib so I can get in there and just sort of reduce down the black outlines a little bit but without completely removing them I just find it looks a little bit more natural and it just gives that little bit more of a 3D effect when I tone down these black outlines.
did also go ahead and erase some of the outlines on those little fairy lights over the bathtub but I forgot to film that but I did do it so you'll see that in the final reveal. happy with where we are now and let's see here is the final reveal so this has got all of the shadows in the right places so you'll get a bit more of an idea about what it all looks like I love that golden bathtub I'd love to jump in there and have a soak myself I think I thank you all so much for watching today I wish you all a colorful day and I will see you again next time.